The idea of a brain implant has been around for decades, but until recently, it's a concept that generally only appears in science fiction. However, with the recent announcement of Neuralink's human trials, we may be closer than ever to unlocking the potential of a brain implant. This new technology could revolutionize the way we interact with technology, helping to bridge the gap between the physical and digital worlds. But what does this mean for our future? Neuralink's brain implant technology has the potential to enhance our cognitive abilities, improve our memory and concentration, and even help to prevent or treat neurological disorders. As we move closer to the reality of Neuralink, it is important to understand the implications and potential of this groundbreaking technology. Don't worry though, as this video will discuss what Neuralink is, the potential implications of this technology, and the possibilities for our future. So enough with the talking, let's dive into it. This is Technology Now. Neuralink, a neurotechnology company founded by Elon Musk, has recently announced that the first human trials of their brain implant technology have begun. This groundbreaking technology could revolutionize the way humans interact with technology and open up a world of potential applications. Neuralink's implant is a small chip placed directly into the brain that allows a user to interact with computers and digital devices as well as control prosthetic limbs. This implant could potentially be used to treat a range of neurological conditions including Alzheimer's, dementia, and paralysis. Since its founding in July 2016, Neuralink has been actively engaged in the cutting-edge medical field of BCI or brain-computer interface. As a firm dedicated to BCI, it has come a long way since then. Devices have been implanted in non-human primates and even pigs as part of this tremendous accomplishment. What's more, thanks to the company's latest advancements, we now have an infamous monkey that can play Pong using just his thoughts. Using digital telepathy made feasible by BCI technology, Neuralink has made this a reality. In its next round of studies, Neuralink will be able to begin human testing. But Neuralink will not be the first device authorized by the FDA despite the company's best efforts. Instead, it's a gadget made by a rival private firm named Synchron and it's called a Stentrode. I know most of you will find this news alarming, but hear me out. It's excellent news for everyone even if the permission went to a rival firm. Competition is the finest thing for the business and should benefit not just Elon Musk and Neuralink but also us. The result is increased market rivalry which in turn encourages creative minds to work on novel solutions to problems and promotes new scientific breakthroughs. Neuralink stands out as a unique company in the brain-computer interface or BCI field because it wants to change the way people interact with technology. Even though the ambitious project hasn't been approved by the government yet, it aligns with the wider perspective of research and developments for BCI. Neuralink could make it easier for people and machines to talk to each other in a way that feels more natural and intuitive. Neuralink's new technology could completely change the way people use technology and make BCI easier for a wider range of people to use. It would pave the way for human-machine hybrids in which human brains operate computers and interact with AI. Nevertheless, the BCI technology eventually ran out of steam and had to be abandoned. BCI just disappeared off the scene between the mid-1990s and 2016. During this time period, BCI did not advance its practices or procedures in any way. But that was before Neuralink stepped in to help. In fact, it was all thanks to all of this that Neuralink became so well known. Due to its mad approach, Neuralink has been widely recognized as a leader in the field of technological innovation ever since it was founded. Maybe you're wondering what Neuralink's secret is to ensure BCI's continued success. Well, we'll reveal that to you shortly, but before we continue, I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming tech uploads. So Neuralink's goal from the start has been to use cutting-edge methods in tandem with current technology. Now we know for sure that the Neuralink startup is following in Tesla's footsteps since Tesla developed the same approach. Tesla did not create the electric vehicle in the automotive business, rather it integrated cutting-edge features into a tried-and-true product. 
Tesla did not try to reinvent the vehicle. Rather, they filled in the blanks in technological progress, an approach that proved very successful and ultimately elevated the quality of the final product. This is the same with Neuralink. The idea behind Neuralink's cutting-edge method is simple. A computer that reads and responds to thoughts. But simply, your brain is a clump of electric flesh that runs your whole body. It creates targeted signals that are then sent to the rest of your body's muscles and organs through nerves. As the brain transmits the command pumps via the spinal cord, those electric pulses may also be seen as the programming language of the human body. However, it is accompanied by a secondary set of difficulties such as a physical injury or degenerative illness that cuts off communication between the brain and the rest of the body. So, BCI is really just a bridge that allows electrical signals to get across the damaged wires. There are essentially two distinct viewpoints on the present BCI setup. There's an invasive method and then there's a non-invasive method. The most typical is the non-invasive one. With this function, it can pick up on any and all electrical brain impulses. While it has some positive effects, they are not nearly as strong as they may be. There's a whole skull sandwiched between those sensors, so this method isn't particularly efficient. So, in order to get a strong linkage to the brain, we should have to resort to invasive methods using RBCI. Right about now is when things start to heat up a little since the current state of BCI industry standards is inadequate. Now, the issue is, what is their present standard? The Utah Array is widely recognized as the standard for brain-computer interfaces at present. It resembles a computer chip, square and with a wide range of spikes protruding from it. These white spikes pierce through the skull and enter the brain. This may seem far-fetched, but it reflects how far technology has advanced. Next, they spike the Utah Array into the brain's outer layer and connect a little computing device to the top of your head, all after cutting a portion. The other end has a massive wire protruding from it and connecting to the other end. They will need to repeat the procedure twice before they see any results. As a result, your brain would include two computer boxes and two spikes. Although that seems weird, but please bear with me. Also, you'd have cables protruding from your skull. It's a tough method to be sure, but it gets the job done. Electrical impulses from the brain's cortex may be read with great ease and speed thanks to the spikes. When the signals are received, the computer interprets them into code. A further benefit of this method is that it enables the individual with the brain implant to operate a piece of electronic equipment just by thinking about doing so. They have the option of using a computer that can operate a mouse and keyboard, or they may use a robotic limb that mimics the feel of a natural arm. However, there are a few drawbacks to this approach that have been uncovered. There are several barriers to doing this kind of study which reduces its viability and potential for expansion. The fact that it can only be used for scientific purposes in the field of medicine is a huge downside. Having individuals wander the world with their brains spilling out would be really crazy. It's tough for them to keep up with it even in their own houses. Since the Utah arrays are literally just a collection of small nails on your brain's surface, there's a good probability your body may reject them as a foreign item. When the puncture became irritated and scarred up, the gadget became worthless and we had to move on to better BCI technology. Here's where the Neuralink steps in. It is poised to become a game changer in several fields. So how will Neuralink take over the BCI technology? This begs the question, what is their present standard? Startup businesses like Neuralink and Synchron are driving the next wave of BCI development today. As was previously indicated, Synchron is the first to enter into comprehensive human testing. Australia volunteered to conduct this study by contacting four people who had just had BCI implantation so that they could participate in the test. The fact that Australia does not have very strict laws about what you may put in people's brains gave Synchron a significant competitive edge. So, FDA gave Synchron approval to begin human testing in the US last year. Patients in the United States have already had their stentrode implants placed, so the plan may go forward. Analyzing the structure of Synchron's implants may help us understand how and why they were able to pass the barrier before Neuralink. Stentrode gets its name from the widespread stents used in modern medicine. 
Stentrode is essentially a stent with a cluster of electrodes fused together. To stimulate the motor cortex of the brain, Synchron employs a process in which cathodes are inserted into the jugular vein and extended to the artery, leading to the brain. The Stentrode's hollow mesh wire expands when the catheter tube is retracted, creating contact with the blood artery walls. Eventually, the implant device will sync with a computer or a mobile device through Bluetooth. Even you cannot detect the presence of a human brain implant. The fact that it just takes a few hours to complete is another benefit of this method. The group plans to do the experiment on an individual with ALS. The electrode will still interact with the neurons, but the difficulty with this approach is that it is not precisely within the cortical tissue. So the transmissions are too narrow to compete with uterase bandwidth. Here's when Neuralink comes in handy. Neuralink has been working on a way to merge the traditional uterine with the cutting-edge stretch road. Thanks to this development, Neuralink wouldn't have to drill another hole in your skull or remove your skull entirely. A key goal of the compensation firm is to employ the robotic sewing machine to surgically implant electrode wires into the cerebral cortex's outermost layer. This method allows electrodes to enter neurons directly, maximizing available bandwidth. There will be thousands of small wires in each gadget, providing plenty of room for the enormous quantities of brain information. The company's computer gadget designed to carry out this procedure is so tiny that it can fit in the hollow cavity within the skull and be readily stitched up. And there would be no outward indication of the treatment until new hair starts growing in. Neuralink is planning to provide a completely new kind of robotic brain surgery. Having successfully stitched the wires into the human brain, Neuralink is now prepared to submit the final submission to the FDA. Ultimately, the implications of this technology will depend on how it is used and the potential for its misuse. However, the potential to revolutionize our lives and the way we interact with technology is surely undeniable. So tell us what you think of Elon Musk's recent technological exploration. Do you think this will help us in the long run? Are you fascinated to see what the future holds for this amazing innovation? You can share your thoughts with us below. I hope you found this video entertaining. Again, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching. All the latest technological developments right now. This is Technology Now. I'll see you in the next video.